Hi, this is Kay Smith. I'm in Mobile, Alabama on October 27th, 2014. I'm here with Judy Burnham to conduct her oral history interview for the Southern Chapter. And we'll start. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. Um, please describe how you became interested in librarianship and give a brief overview of your professional career. Well, I worked at, in a library when I went to a, a community college and found it very interesting. Of course, I just did the shelving and that kind of thing, but it, it just really perked my, my interest. And uh, so I, I also worked as a paraprofessional at Mobile Public Library. Had a variety of positions there. I worked at a bookmobile that was parked in a parking lot mm -hmm. of a shopping center. And I worked, so I worked there. I also worked in the children's department at one of the branches. I was uh, worked in the circulation department and ended up being head of circulation at the main library. So I enjoyed my work there. And then I also uh, worked at the United States Sports Academy as a peer professional. Uh, I worked as a receptionist slash librarian, mm -hmm. which was kind of an unusual position. And then I was in the library full time. And that really um, made me decide that I wanted to go back to library school and get my degree. And so it was at that point that I did. And I went over to the University of Southern Mississippi, got my degree. Um, I worked as a graduate assistant while I was at uh, Southern Miss, uh, helping in the media lab, helping teachers develop different forms of media. Uh, and then my first professional job was with the university. I worked as an instruction librarian and uh, started out at a, one of our hospitals at the University Medical Center and worked there for several years <clears throat> and then came over to campus where I uh, was a, worked as um, in, uh, assistant director for regional services. Mm -hmm. Uh, where I was in charge of our outreach program that we had at the time. And then I <coughs> became uh, assistant director for administrative and regional services. <coughs> Excuse me, where I was responsible not only for the outreach program, but also did some stuff with the budgeting and different things uh, and with the administrative level. Was appointed associate director in 2005. <coughs> and then when our director uh, left, was appointed interim director and then finally director in 2007. I've been in that position since then. Quite a career. Let's talk a little bit about your Southern chapter activities. Um, do you remember the first Southern chapter meeting you attended and what de details do you remember about that one? Uh, it was in Jackson, Mississippi, my first one. Uh -huh. uh, and I just remember the welcoming atmosphere that, you know, I was a newbie right out of library school, but everybody was just so welcoming and I just felt like it was a really friendly, supportive group. Yeah, that's cool. Um, do you have any funny or interesting stories you might recall about Southern chapter meetings you've attended? Well, that first one in Jackson, Mississippi, the thing that really stands out in my mind is when Ada Seltzer did the strip. I've heard so much about this. <laughs> <laughs> it just really stands out in uh -huh. my mind. Just saw it. I mean, it was in tribute to one of the directors that was retiring. Um, and uh, so she, she did that. It was very tasteful. Well, I hope he was flattered. A little unusual. <laughs> and then um, the meeting in uh, Savannah, my husband went with me to that one. It was the first one he got to go with me. And again, everybody was so friendly and so welcoming and, and seemed to enjoy his company. So that was pretty special. Of course, the ones in Puerto Rico have been special because it's such a beautiful place and a, a place that you might not get to go to otherwise. And so it was, it was fun to, to go on the Puerto Rico trips. Uh, of course, the meeting in Mobile, uh, I think it was in 2004, uh, six, something I like that. I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, memorable because uh -huh. of the, all the planning that we went into it. I was um, in charge of the program for the meeting in Charleston. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, that one was memorable because yeah. of the responsibilities. Sure. And then the next meeting in 2008 in Birmingham, I was chair of the chapter. And then, uh, of course, this one where I'm local arrangements chair has been really memorable also. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's a beautiful place here. Thank so, you. It's a little, you could definitely hear the whispering arches though. I was <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 
Can you talk about how uh, the Southern chapter has evolved through the years? Well, it, you know, technology's changed. Yeah. And it just, our trends for our paper presentations and that kind of thing just kind of seem to follow the trends of yeah. technology. Yeah. Technology's become much more important. I mean, when I started my library career, career back in uh, the early 1990s, CD-ROM was cutting-edge technology. Yeah. There was no internet. Yeah. And uh, so the technology I, I see is really driving the not only the keynote speakers and the CE classes, but also the papers and posters that are presented as well. And it, you see the younger librarians replacing the older librarians, and that's exciting because, you know, we need to encourage the younger librarians to take a role to become involved in the association so that we can prepare them to take the leadership roles when the old guard moves out. <laughs> um, but through it all, it's still that networking and that connection and that support in um, the association. It's, it's always there, no matter what the trends are, how the technology changes, or who comes or who goes, you still have that supportive system. Some things don't change, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, what sets, in your opinion, what sets the uh, Southern Chapter apart from other professional library associations? Uh, I think that we have fun while learning. But, and we network and we support each other. <clears throat> I've heard MLA um, people say that they wouldn't miss a Southern Chapter meeting because we always have the most fun. Yeah. Uh, and to me, it's because it's a smaller group, you can get to know each other better. Uh, MLA is so large that if, unless you're active in a section, it's really hard to get to know anybody real well. But Southern Chapter gives you that opportunity to do that. Okay. Um, well, you've been several had several roles actually in Southern Chapter. Um, do you remember what other committees you served on besides? Well, I, I wrote them down so I could. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I could not remember uh -huh. them all. Um, I was on the awards and honors uh, committee. Uh, a member from 2010 to 2014, uh, and then I ended up being a chair of the strategic planning committee in wow. 809. That's following my role as chair of the chapter that I was chair of the um, strategic planning committee. I was cha uh, chapter chair from 07 to 08, chair elect and um, chair of the program planning committee from 06 to 07. Uh, I've re been a research mentor since 2003. I served on the communications cha uh, committee and was chair of that committee from 03 to 05. <laughs> Uh, served on the conference committee for the Mobile here, uh, the meeting here Mobile, uh, and then uh, on the program committee for 2000, I've been a member of the research committee and a member of the nominating committee, and this year I'm the chair of the local arrangements committee. Wow. So a, a lot of different uh, yeah. committees and roles. It's a lot. Um, well, it's good that you're a re research mentor because I know you've done a lot of research, so that's great. Um, um, can you do you know much about the founding of the chapter or about chapter related uh, events of historical significance? I really don't. Yeah. I, when I read that question, I tried yeah. to think. Uh, I guess because I've not, I've been a member for a short, you know, short time. When you think about the historical part, yeah. Yeah. and I really don't know a whole lot about the yeah. history. Yeah. Yeah. All right. After our experience with the fire alarm, um, <laughs> we are back. And we can now talk about how the Southern Chapter has impacted your professional development through your career. Well, I keep talking about networking and support, but that's, you know, it all goes back to that. Um, there's been, people have mentored me who were older and wiser, not only in librarianship, but in leadership as well. And so that, that support is always there. Um, the education, aspects of it, the CE courses that you can take, as well as the, the keynote speakers and getting ideas from uh, the posters and the papers. Uh, it's just a continuing education process to help librarians keep up with their, their skills. And then the opportunity for leadership development. If you want to become a leader, Southern Chapter will allow you to become a leader and will mentor you and help you to become the kind of leader you should be. 
um, can start off with leadership opportunities and small committees and then just go from there. All right. Um, so what are some of the names of some of the people who have contributed to your professional development? Barbara Shearer, who is now at the uh, Alabama Osteopathic School, was my first supervisor and a real good mentor for me in South Alabama. She not only taught me uh, about the library and helped me mentor me in that way, but also the politics, which is so important as you're working in an <laughs> academic library to know the politics, who to go to, who to avoid, who has power and who doesn't, that kind of thing. Uh, Jan LeBays has always been just such a supportive person with her hugs and her friendly smile and and she just uh, she's been a, a support to me personally as well as as professionally so I would have to mention her. Cindy Franklin is another one that I would have to mention because she's always been so supportive and uh, a good mentor to watch her leadership skills and to try to adapt mine to match her leadership skills. And Suresh, um, who is just recently retired, is another one that has uh, had a great impact on me. Um, Brett Kirkpatrick, who is retired from the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, was my mentor during the OSL NLM Fellows Leadership, Fellows Mentors Program. Uh, and he taught me a lot, too, again, about politics. Uh, one of the things that I, one of the goals that I wanted to achieve while I was taking part in that program was how to work more within the system to achieve the things that I wanted to do. And he was great at that. He would just, I, I could watch him and get the ideas of how to, to be uh, more politically savvy within my institution. So I think I'd have to, to mention those. Wow, yeah, that's a great group. Um, what do you recall about some of the MLA meetings you've attended? Well, um, I'm, my MLA home is NARS. That's mm -hmm. the, the section that I've chosen because the MLA is so big that I think you have to choose some a group to be a part of. That's true. Uh, so you can be a part of a smaller group in, in NARS. And it's as I was thinking about you know, preparing for this interview, I think it's more the people and the events that I remember more than the posters or the papers. Mm -hmm or the keynotes even. I mean, I take ideas back home with me, but it's those, um, it's those uh, events that you attend, it's those friendships that you make, it's the people uh, that I think have impacted me more. And to me, attending an MLA meeting or even a Southern Chapter meeting is like going to a pep rally for medical <laughs> librarianship. Uh -huh. You come back from a meeting, you're so enthused, you have all these great ideas, and you just uh, are very enthusiastic about your future. Sure, sure, I agree. Um, so how has MLA impacted your professional development? I think um, this basically the same as Southern Chapter, getting the opportunities for leadership. I chaired the, the NARS section, and then I uh, was elected as a section council rep for the NARS group, and that led to me being uh, chair of section council, which led to me being on the MLA board. So it just gave me a lot of, of opportunities that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. Wow. Um, how, just kind of backing up, how has the uh, medical librarian profession changed through your career? and what developments in the field of librarianship have had the greatest impact on your professional life? Well, as I said earlier, CD-ROM was cutting edge technology yeah. <laughs> uh, when I began my career, and so technology has changed so much. Everything was in print back then, and so it's changed collection development because now we're trying to get as much in electronically as we can to make it uh, more useful to other people. There was no internet when I started. BitNet was just starting to come on the field, uh, and so there was no internet. When we would search um, Medline, we'd have to use a 300 baud modem, yeah. <laughs> so that. that's changed a great deal. <laughs> and when I first started um, searching Medline, when I was working for the Sports Academy, I had to go to the National Library of Medicine for a one-week training class <laughs> to be able to get a passcode to be able to search Medline. And now, it's available and open to anyone, anywhere. So uh, that's been been quite a change, also. It sure has. Um, what would, what advice would you give to new medical librarians? Get involved. 
volunteer. Step out of your comfort zone and take leadership roles when they're offered to you or volunteer to take leadership roles. The people around you will mentor you and help you to be successful. And a small leadership role, say, be a member of a committee and then volunteer to chair the committee. And those, uh, those changes, those volunteer opportunities will lead to uh, more opportunities at a, at a higher level. Well, um, do you have any final things to talk about that you want to mention? Uh, Just that how supportive um, the Southern Chapter's been to me, not only professionally but personally. When my husband passed away earlier this year, that, that was just an outpouring of support from the Southern Chapter members, and it, that was just so appreciated to know that, that they cared for me personally as well as professionally. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's great. So what are your plans for retirement? Well, <laughs> I have a bucket list of things uh -huh. I want to do. Of course, I have two grandchildren here in Mobile. I have three grandchildren in California. Wow. So I want to spend more time with them. Uh, I love to take pictures, but I'm not very good at it. So I want to take a <laughs> photography course. I want to have the opportunity to be a little bit more active in my church, maybe lead some Bible studies or whatever. I want to be a reading buddy in our local elementary school oh, cool. because I know how important reading is to yeah. the success of, a, of an individual. And so many children don't have that, that opportunity to read at home because maybe their parents work two jobs to keep things going or whatever. So I want to, to do that. And um, I, I played the piano when I was younger, but have lost that skill. Yeah. So I want to, I recently bought a keyboard and I want to renew my piano skills. And I, my mother has crocheted for as long as I can remember. And I used to crochet, but <laughs> life took over and no time to crochet. Yeah. So I want to learn to relearn to crochet. Cool. So, Lots of things planned. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to continue to come to Southern Chapter? I don't know. <laughs> to see. Yeah, I understand. Without the financial support I that I have right now, we'll it's just have it's to hard see. sometimes. Yeah. 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 yeah, depends on where it is. Yeah, we've yeah. well, been blessed to have you. So thank you. Good. Best of luck to you in your retirement. And thank you for being in this interview. Thank you.